to the chapter. The 22nd chapter of Luke. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Can I say that? Okay. All right. Clean them ears out. We got to have those ears where we can hear. But more than hearing physically, if we've ever heard spiritually, we have got to spiritually be in tune and in touch and hearing what the Spirit would say unto the church. Yes. So from Luke 22, and let's look down at verse number 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as we, as we. Today, I want to preach on surviving the sifting. Surviving. And yet even more than just surviving, we need to thrive. Is the volume too loud? I, I'm just hoping nobody... Brother Mark, we're not too loud for you, are we? Okay. But I'm just telling God's people tonight, surviving the sifting. If we've ever been strong, we've got to be strong today. We are what we eat from our head to our feet. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. We feel that we belong to the Lord, but there is a constant, constant and persistent working of Satan to pull us away from God. And if we're not careful and stay strong spiritually where our minds are influenced under the indwelling of the infilling of the Holy Ghost, we'll find that our own flesh is trying to lure us back to the place we used to be and then carry us even farther, farther away from God than we were before we first came to Him. Now, I know God is able to save from the God of most to the Father most, he's able to save to the uttermost. But the thing is, we he can and he will, but he needs us if we ever realize on placing our priorities on what is really first and foremost. What is most important in our life, in this whole life, if you don't know, I know you do. That's why you're still here. I'm looking at people that have lived for God for years. And you've lived for God because you recognize this is the right thing to do. This is the best thing to do. And by living for God, it is the most enduring of all things that we will ever do as far as beneficially good. You don't have to do anything but be just at a place of resisting God, rejecting God, just being like what we were before we ever came to God, and you'll automatically have eternal destination in a place that was never prepared for God's people, but it was prepared for Satan, the devil, it says, and his angels. But people that reject God, people that don't endure, people that don't last the duration for what Satan tries to do, Satan has always been the enemy of people they just didn't really recognize. But when you come to God, when you recognize your condition of what you are and who you are and what you have been, that's when we recognize that we come to God 
and we just thought the devil was against us before we came to God. He was working against us to lure us, but now he is mad at you. Do you realize the devil is mad at you because you have left him? And you are out of his power, out of his clutches, and all of that, but he wants you back. He wants you back. He's wanting to entice people with the weakness of their humanity by the things that people are tempted with before they even came to God. What lured people before they came to God? If you'll notice that when people backslide, if they do, they go back to the weak and beggarly things of the world. And they become more engrossed, more entangled in those things than they ever were. And the latter state of that man or woman, whoever they are, is worse than the first. And eternity will be worse for them. It would be better to have never known God than to know Him and to turn back. So I'm just saying today, stay on course. When we realize that even Peter didn't have the Holy Ghost at this time. But he was called out of the world to come and follow Jesus. To deny himself. And to take up his cross and follow Jesus. And I'm telling God's people tonight, we are doing that today. And we talk about things, and, and many people, when they talk about things that cause them to be put out, that cause them to dedicate and say no to the world, the flesh, and the devil. The flesh is our flesh. But many people don't like things that challenge them. They don't like things that cause them to sacrifice. And when you make that decision that you're not going to live for the devil. And see, when we make that decision that we're not. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Jesus said, come learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Did I quote it? I'm telling God's people, it's a better life living for Him. And always remember this. And I know we remember these things. But Paul said, I stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. And so we got to remember some things. I have to bring some things. I have to look at myself and God, what am I doing to make myself in a condition and position so that I can be better through your power by the work that you want to do in me instead of the destruction that Satan wants to do. Satan has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But God's to come to give us life and more abundantly in him, through him, by him for us. And I'm telling us the truth tonight. But Satan resents it. Satan failed from a place that he was with God. And all those one-third angels of heaven that fail with him because God cast them out. Because of rebellion. Satan said, I will ascend to the throne of the Most High. I will be like the Most High God. And all the things that he said that he would do. And sometimes people today in their struggle to have power, many people are power hungry in this world. Power to do things that they want to do and have predominance and preeminence over people. But if there's one thing that we want to have preeminence over is over ourself and over what we are in and of ourselves without God, we want to have power to say no to the world, to the flesh, and to the devil. And whether 
Peter realized it, and Jesus called him Simon. He didn't call him Peter, which means rock. And so I'm telling God's people tonight, Satan sometimes deals with people in such subtle ways that he appears as an angel of light. But inside, behind that mask, there's an ugly, mean devil that is resentful of you living for God. He blew his opportunity in heaven to be kicked out of heaven. And we are seeking to go where we've never been and to go where Satan had been, and he resents the fact that we want to live for God. That's why the devil is fighting you so hard. We just got to make up our mind. We will not be defeated. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me and you as well. Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. I mean, he wants to break you down to the lowest level that he can. Separate everything that's of any good, of any value, or of any potential to be something more than what we were not before we come to God. I'm telling God's people we are privileged tonight that we want to be in church tonight. Many people tonight, many churches are closed tonight. And many people that are not in church on a Sunday night, that were in church on a Sunday morning maybe, and I'm not here being critical and thinking we're above and beyond everybody else. We are what we are by the grace of God. And so I'm telling you, I'm thankful that we have a desire to be in God's house. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves as uh, together as a matter of some is, but so much the more as you see that day approaching. And so today we see people being less and less. The devil's talking to people about being, you don't need to go to church tonight or to this morning you got other things you need to be doing. The things that we need to be doing is cutting ourselves. We need to take a proverbial sharp knife and begin to cut away things away from us and everything that would bind us, everything that would take away from us, everything that would diminish us in any and every way so that we can be more of what God wants us to be. We are God's best representatives being called out of this world into His church, into His marvelous light that we are in, and we become the light that people see the love of God. They see the attributes of God reflected from Him through us for the glory of God. And that's what the world needs to see. That's who we need to be is what God has called us to be. Whatever it is from being just a saint of God, firstly, being a Christian, Christ-like. That's what he's called us to be. And Satan is tempting everybody that's trying to live for God to go back to the weak and beggarly things of the world. There's no hope in the past. There's no future in the past. We left it because when we decided to live for God, we evaluated and saw that there is nothing there. We don't need what we came out of. We need what God is wanting to lead us and guide us into all truth, all righteousness, all peace, all holiness, all the attributes of God that He wants to lead us into a higher height and a deeper depth, a broader width in Him that He wants us to be led into. And I believe today that if we've ever prayed for one another, I believe that Jesus from the human element, He prayed. But from the spiritual element, 
He is our strength. He's our life. He's the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, however you want to call it. Holy God that loves us, cares for us. He gave himself in that human body that he made that was both God and man. And the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary, and she conceived, and that which is conceived of thee, she was told, is of the Holy Ghost. And so we see the power. We see what Jesus was, what he could be, what he did, what he accomplished, and how he had victory over the world, the devil, and the flesh. He had victory over all those things because he gave his mental faculties in dedication and in consecration to God. The, the flesh gave surrender to the influence and the indwelling and the directing power of God to go, to do, and accomplish for the will of the eternal spirit. And that's what we as a church are doing. We're seeking to grow in the grace, the knowledge, the power, the wisdom, and understanding of God to be strong over self, the world, and the flesh as Jesus, the human element, was empowered by the indwelling Spirit of God. And there's always something Satan is looking at, looking for, in every individual that he and his kingdom those one-third of the fallen angels that fail with Satan. Aren't you glad that two-thirds of those angels were smart? You think, have you ever just thought about some of these things? Satan and one-third of the angels fail. What did they, when I say fail, F-E-L-L, when they fail, F-A-I-L-E-D failed. That's when they F-E-L-L. They failed because they were cast out. What were they thinking? When I see people backsliding today, knowing the time that we live in, knowing that as we close in on the latter part of the race, and fight that we are in. This is no time for people to be backsliding. If we've ever prayed for backsliders, we need to pray for them now. And they're blinded when they fail, and they become more blinded, and they become more in hell, in torment that they will be if they don't return. They become what the Bible says is a two-fold child of hell. Do you realize I'm not trying to be a judge, but when I see people that I know that they live for God and they're going wayward, backward, going back to those things of the world, I see you don't backslide overnight. It's a slow, gradual process that many people don't even realize what's happening. The subtlety of Satan. That's another good message to preach in itself. And I'm throwing out a lot of good titles of good subject matter to preach as I'm preaching tonight. But I'm just telling you, Jesus said, Simon, Simon. He didn't call him Peter. He didn't call him Rock. He didn't see him as strength. He was letting Peter see that Jesus was looking at him. He was letting Peter see that he was not looking at strength and rock for stability. And prudential, they have this big old rock out there. 
and some other insurance companies, something that's rock solid, st security stable. I want to tell you the greatest stability that we have is not insurance, it's not assurance, it's not reassurance of ourselves, but we are complete in Jesus. We are strong in Him. We are victors in Him, and without Him, even though we can be a victor today, we can be a victim before the day is done. Jesus just looked at Peter, and he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired thee to sift thee as wheat. He didn't call him Peter, as I've said. He called him Simon. Now, I don't know what the meaning of Simon is, but Peter meant rock, something hard, something stable, something lasting, something that could endure. Sand and dirt, when it comes to big rain, that stuff will just wash away and float away. A rock will stay there. It can handle a lot of erosion. I want to tell you what Jesus was saying. The more that God has in mind for you, the more the devil wants to destroy you. The more you become something valuable to God and in opposition and opposing Satan, the more he wants to destroy you. He's looking for your weakness. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God is greater than in you than Satan is in the world. But if Satan can talk you out of things that will strengthen you, like being in church, like hearing the Word, like abstaining from the very appearance of evil, us abstaining from the things that are going to take away and diminish, things that are going to rob you of your time and your devotion to God. And as we see the day approaching, we should be in church more, and I'll look at the religious world, and I'll see them less and less that they are attending church. And it's easy to fall out when you don't stay in God's people today. If we've ever looked at today what we are in God, are we progressing? See what are we growing? We need to evaluate ourselves. The Bible tells us to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Today many have wavered and there is a constant drawing. There's a constant wooing. I believe that every day we live, Satan is plotting and planning our demise. Our destruction, our departure, our diminishment in God every day. It's possible to go to church and still come to church and yet not even have a desire. Really, we're just doing what we've done as creatures of habit. But somewhere, as many people most churches, if you look at them today, and I'm trying to hurry on, but I'm trying to tell us some important things. Most churches today, when you look at them, many of the people that were in once in them, many of them are still alive today, but not alive in God. They've walked away. They've become blinded. They've been distracted, and they're being destructed because... Jesus would say to them, He wants us to be rock-solid Christians. Jesus does. Satan wants you to be crumbling sad. He wants you to crumble, stumble, fumble, mumble, and fall. But I'm telling you, the Lord wants to strengthen you. Jesus told Peter, Satan has desired to have you. He wants you. That he can sift you as wheat. I got an old sifter, one of those flower sifters, and you crank on that thing. That thing is older than I am. It belonged to my mother. 
But Satan wants to sift us, separate us from everything that we want to do that's like God. Everything that we do that is for God, he wants to part us from those things. Part us from our desire for the spiritual, for the eternal, for the everlasting with God and Satan resents us. He'll never have a second chance. He'll never have another chance to be restored to his place in God. You realize that today? He had no second chance. Little children, sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous. If you fall, if you fail, get up. We need to pray. We need to find a place before we get up and we resume. We need to repent. We need repentance without repentance. And that's where Satan wants people to fall. Little children, sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with Jesus Christ the righteous. Pray, repent, stay strong. If you fall, don't give up because you fail. Get up! Sometimes we have to reach down in a proverbial way and help somebody get up. We have to do that. God's people have to realize, here's what it says, But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. It's amazing that even though Peter would be the lead man in Jesus' ministry, it's amazing that the man that would preach the first gospel message to the world, when he stood up on the day of Pentecost after the resurrection of Jesus. And Peter's going to stand up. A man that failed the Lord and uh, before the cock crew called Crude or cold or whatever, I call it cold. Twice. Peter denied him thrice. Do you realize? If it were us, we would have kicked him to the curb. But it's amazing sometimes some of those that are in the best positions, highest positions, when they fail. Sometimes that failure teaches them a lesson. If we learn anything, we need to learn. The higher you go in God, the greater you can fall. And what we have to recognize and realize is this. It's better to not fail. Maybe Peter felt too much self-confidence instead of God's confidence. And he failed. He denied the Lord three times. But isn't it good that there's mercy in God and of God for us? Us. I'm talking about us. That means you and me. And I'm saying, Jesus said, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail thee not. But he failed. And when thou art converted, when you're changed, when you're transformed, by the infilling, indwelling, empowering Spirit of God, you'll find the strength to stand. 
but the way that you'll stand strong and stand the strong best is when you stay strong in the Spirit. When you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. This is another message of itself, and this is the fact that Jesus gave him another chance. Jesus, who was God Almighty, what does Jesus even mean? Jehovah Savior. God gave humanity a second chance. Satan and the one-third of the angels that fail in heaven in rebelling, rebelling against God, they were never given a second chance. They will never have another chance. And because they have no other chance, mercy, grace, and salvation for them never will be. Never. And they resent that God has given us really more than one chance. Little children, sin not. But if any man said, we have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the right just. We have that in him. And so we can repent and not repeat, hopefully. Pray that you be strong because Satan is always wanting to sift you and separate you from the strength of God and leave you with the weakness of your flesh, leave you with the failure of self, leave you defeated, leave you discouraged, leave you distraught, leave you confused and feeling all kinds of defeat, hoping that you will feel that there's no hope. There is no place of repentance. Jesus gave Peter a second chance. Peter felt remorse for what he did. And so should we. And Jesus told him, when Satan desired to sift him his wheat, but he prayed for him that his faith fell him not, that ought to tell us that any time that we're going to pray, we need to incorporate the statement, God, strengthen me not to fail. Strengthen me, God, that I can be strong. There is no strength in my flesh. The strength of your spirit, your grace, all of that is made perfect in the time of our weakness. We need to have no confidence in self. Realize I can do all things. Tell your neighbor you can be a successful Christian. Y'all are not very cooperative. You can be a successful Christian if you put your confidence in the Lord. Pray for one another. Pray for yourself. Satan desires to sift you as we. But I believe that there is strength of God. I believe that we can pray for one another as the man Jesus the human element, he prayed for Peter. As the eternal God, he strengthened him. He was strengthened most. The most that he could have ever been strengthened when he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And we are strengthened the most 
when we are filled with the Holy Ghost and not just filled, but we stay full and running over. If we've ever prayed for strength, if we've ever sought to be filled and stay full of the Holy Ghost, we got to be full of Him. Every day of our life, we got to pray to be stronger. And when He was to be converted, and I want to say this in closing. Time is almost gone. We don't have to st uh, stop when we do, but we do usually stop at a predictable time. But I'm telling God's people, when you look at Peter filled with the Holy Ghost, when he was going to be converted, when he was going to be filled with the Holy Ghost, that he would have strength. But Satan will never stop the sifting process. He's always going to try to get you in a sifter. But you got to be strong. you got to be intact through the strength of the Holy Ghost that's going to bind you together with God and His Word and his people. If we've ever sought to have a bonding, that we will not be sifted. Satan desires just because he and all the one third of the angels desire to sift and separate and divide and destroy you. Doesn't mean it can happen. That's why we all, we used to sing a song in times past, I wish we had somebody that could sing that or play that. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. We need strength in God with God's love and our love toward Him and Him to us. And our love to one another, and that's reciprocating to all of us. See your brother and your sister as your friend. See Satan and that one-third of the angels as your enemy. Mark them, know them that labor among you. Be strong today. And so Jesus saw past Peter's failure. And I hope that tonight, if we fail in any way, that God is looking at us. And he looked beyond my fault. And he saw my need. And he'll look beyond our failures. And we have them. The Bible says there is no man that doeth good and sinneth not. No man. Any just human is going to be weak. And fail at some time because Satan is always sifting. How many of you have ever walked in the course of your life? And never tripped and never failed in the physical. Is there anybody here? Nobody is saying that they haven't. Either you're committal or non-committal. Either you're not answering or whatever. But some said they haven't. Or how they have and nobody says they haven't. But see, people fail. And we have to pray for strength for failures, for ourselves and for others. We ought to pray for one another that God don't let my brother, don't let my sister be sifted as wheat. The sifting process is going to happen as far as the process of seeking to sift 
But God, give us strength. Bind us together. Bond us together with your love and power that we won't separate, that we won't come apart, that we'll stay together, that there won't be no seams for failure, but we will be bonded together in strength, and we'll be stronger. And so see, after Satan, I mean Simon, who we know is Peter, after he failed, he denied the Lord three times. But you never hear, you never read in the Word, you never read in history of his life where he ever denied the Lord again. He even felt that he wasn't worthy to be crucified like Jesus, so he was crucified upside down. Sometimes failures help us to realize the weakness of flesh and make us recognize the strength of God's Spirit. And that's what we need today, like never before, is to realize that. And not only when we realize that Jesus prayed for his disciples, he prayed for his people as he was in the flesh praying for them. But now we need one another praying for one another like never before to be strong. And so tonight, when you're converted, strengthen thy brethren. That's what we seek to do is strengthen the brethren with a word of hope with comfort, with love, with an extended love and fellowship with one another, realizing without Jesus we can do nothing. And we can do more with Him and us bound together as God's people to be a stronger force. And when we realize we need to be strong, but you realize a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. We need to be strong today, that we stay together. And God's people, that's more than one church in a collective place in one locality. That needs to be God's church universally across this globe need to be bound together. If we've ever stuck and stayed together, we need to do tonight. Now, we're going to stand tonight. We will depart. We will go to our respective homes, but we're still bound together in spirit. Can we stand tonight? I'm talking on some things that will bring revival as we realize that we can be sifted this week, but we're going to bind together in ourself, to be strong in ourself, and to be strong together as ourself.